Hi guys, and welcome back to another lit ass video with your girl Miss Speaks on the ones and twos. Please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified every time I post another lit ass video, okay? So, this video is going to be called How I Almost Got Married and Then It Went to Shits. Like, to shits. <laughs> like, real rap, okay? Then we can also call this Clay's story, but we ain't going to do that. We're going to call it How I Almost Got Married and It Went to Shits. I like that. So, let's really talk about this, okay? So, at one point in my life, I dated a guy named Clay. Um, and we were in, we were on and off for five and a half years. Um, I could say probably the last eight months, nine months we were engaged. Um, of course, throughout the relationship, there was a lot of red flags. I'm sure on both ends. Um, and we both learned a lot for each other. And I can't say we both because I can't speak for him, but I can speak for myself. I know I've learned a lot. Um, a lot of things within that relationship. So, throughout the last nine months of our engagement, at the time, we was going through a lot of shit. Like, y'all, a lot of shit. Okay? Um, we just had moved back from um, Huntsville, Alabama. And at the time, I couldn't renew my lease. And my family... After everything that we've been through, a lot of my family members didn't really, you know, like them, you know, and that's just the truth. To be real, you know, we keep it raw over here, and I'm sure it was vice versa, you know, on that end, because a lot of things had transpired within their relationship. And at the time, when you're young, you keep a lot of people in your relationship, and what I mean by that is, like, you vent to a lot of people. As I got older, I've learned that that's not something that you should be doing. Like, wherever you're going through with you and your partner should stay between you and your partner. And I'm not saying there's not sometimes where we may need people to get advice, you know, and stuff like that. But it should just be one person. It shouldn't be one person that you know is going to go tell bop, boop, 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 boop. Or you shouldn't be the person going to different people saying bop, boop, 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 boop. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes it can send the wrong message. You know, a relationship is a relationship and it's going to go through ups and downs, going to go through trials and tribulations, but not everybody's supposed to be involved in your trials and tribulations. Like, <laughs> that's just facts. Like, whether it's family or not, that's the time where you have to pick and choose what's really important um, and really know, like, moving forward what it is that you want to do. You know what I'm saying? But we were young. So at that time, um, with us just moving back, I think my grandma read something in the newspaper and it was about like this program or whatever and this program was like a, a apprenticeship so it was like a new program and it was from the ages of 17 to like 20 24 or 23 or something like that and they just came out with a program um through this program you was able to become a direct support professional um and then you could also get your license now at this time i was already um i had my I had my license because I wanted to get my license through job for it. But, I, you know, I was teaching him, you know, how to drive and um, stuff like that. And I was like, damn, that's a good program. And that look good on the license. Like, you know, that you actually went to a driving school type shit. So, <clears throat> you know, it was about evolving. Again, we're engaged. <laughs> so, um... We wound up going to this program, so it was like we was going to school together. Like, now, mind you, we already done that. Like, we met in kindergarten. I know this shit sound crazy, right? <laughs> you know, but we really did. We met in kindergarten. Like, real shit. We met in kindergarten. That was the crazy part. Um, So, at the time, like, we already been to school, you know. So... We're in school, you know, it's a lot of new people, a lot of new faces, you know. I even ran back into one of my own, one of my close friends at the time in the program. <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Like, you know, it, it was definitely a good time. But then, <clears throat> y'all, you know, in my story, shit gets real. <laughs> 
it was these three girls. Ironically, me and the two girls out of the three wound up becoming cool, but it was another girl. Her name was Tashina. Um, and at first, it was like, you know, us, me, him, and a couple other people. And I can't even say, like, against. You know, like, when you, I don't know, it was weird. Like, people just, you just fuck with people that you knew, pretty much. Um, and it always seemed like it was some type of animosity or something. I don't know, was it maybe because we, I can't even say we, I speak for myself. Maybe because I was always getting answers right in class and, you know, Clay was too, shit. Like, you know, we was like really one of the top people in the fucking class. So I don't know, maybe that was the case. I'm not really sure. Um, so in the beginning, it was like we were against, you know, them two girls. Eventually, me and the other two girls and Clay wound up becoming cool in the program. Um, and one of the girls, Tashima, um, her and Clay wound up becoming very close. Um, and Clay was always one of them people that was, how can I put this? Had to be a cat to save a hoe. Like, we used to go with me, y'all. He had to be cat to fucking save a hoe. Okay? So, at this time, like, me and him would have, like, deep conversations, like, um, you know, about the situation. And I remember, I remember me basically telling him, like, I know, like, you used to, like, trying to help, you know, women and people that you see that's in need. Because at the time, she was going through some shit. Um, the girl was going through some shit. That was some real shit. Um, and we were definitely one of the people, like, we see people going through shit, especially him. Like, even down to his friends. Like, I can say that, like, he will always look out. And I was all, and I was the same way. So, I understood it. But there's some people that you got to watch out for. And I remember me vividly telling him, vividly, I mean, telling him, like, I don't think she's not, you know, pretty much she's not one of the ones that need to be saved. In my mind, she was a snake. And that's exactly what the fuck she was. So after a while, as things proceeded to go on, we're in school. It was like a two-year program. The first year, you're going to go through the program, um, you know, go take all the courses. And then the next year, you actually on the field. Like they're sorry, all my hands on the camera. Like they're training you or whatever where you're actually working while you're getting paid type shit the second year. So the first year was when like all the drama and all the shit was going on. So, um touch so where did I leave off at y'all? <laughs> so Yeah, sorry y'all. I told him that I, I felt like, I told you the girl was drinking, that I felt like he, you know, the girl was a snake. Like, but me, at the time, in my mind, what I was thinking was, you know, to keep it being with y'all, I felt safe. Like, I felt like I was comfortable. And that's one of the things I learned, too. Never get comfortable. Because I felt like we done been through so much. Y'all, when I tell y'all we've been through so much, we've been through some shit. And I felt comfortable. And I have learned in that situation, no matter what situation you're in, please, you can take anything from the video. Don't get comfortable. Because people got feelings just like you and things are always liable to change. And that's just period. I don't give a damn if you marry. You can apply it to whatever you got to apply it to. But that's just some real shit message. But I got comfortable. So in my mind, like, you know, we good is stint. Like, we engaged. Like, yo, I'm talking people really buying dresses type shit. Like, it's stint. Don't get me wrong. I always said to him, like, yo, if you ever feel like this is not something you want to do, like, let me know. But anyway, so... It, there would be nights where I we would just get off work type shit. This was going into the second year. Um, we would just get off work and shit. And he would be like, oh, she need or she, he going to take her some food and no shit like that. We would took the girl out and everything. So around this time, me and him wound up getting into it. Like at first we lived with my grandma and shit. And then eventually we wound up going to his sister's house for like a holiday. We just never left, y'all. Like, I'm going to just keep it a bean. Like, we just never left. I, I ain't never realized. You know, somehow, somehow you look back on some shit. Like, 
we just never left. So, um, we wind up, you know, staying at his sister's house and shit. So, there, there would be nights where he would leave and, you know, take her some food shit like that. And at this time, like I said, I felt comfortable. Like, I'm secure. Like, I don't, and my mom don't got nothing to worry about. Now, I'm not saying this like something happened between the two because to this day, I was told nothing ever happened. So, but it did, it did, it did, it did. And at this point, it is what it is. You feel me? But um, me and him was going through some shit and it all started over us getting over an argument over a job. And I wound up leaving and I moved out. Um, mind you, we was in school. This shit twinkled over to school, y'all. So, at this point, we going through shit. And it seemed like it started to separate. Like, at one point, the damn girl was our friend. Then eventually, I never had a problem with the girl. I don't even know. To this day, I still don't know where the beef came in at between me and the girl. Because after we already done went through our shit with the, you know, them maybe feeling like we was always raising our hand. You know, we always answer questions, you know, stuff like that. I don't know. Maybe that was the case. But like I said, eventually, we wound up taking... We became cool with them, took one, you know, took the girl in and everything. So I never really had a problem with the girl. So to the day, I don't know where the fuck the beef came from. But it's like once me and him went through something, she started to side over there, which was fine. There is no size. Like at the end of the day, my mind, that's my man. And we're going to go through shit. The fact that this even in school, you know, to each his own, that's how I let you know we was young. We was dumb. But um, so then at that time, uh, she wound up, like I said, she was moving to, you know, leaning towards his side. So, at this point, we would, like, pull each other away in class. And while we're in class in the hallway, we would talk about certain shit. Like, what was going on? And I remember me vaguely one time asking him, why in the world was she? Because, remember, y'all, I moved out. So, I stayed at my grandma's house. And he still stayed at his sister's house. Um, so... I remember me vaguely asking him, like, and at this time, he had hair. Um, I'm not sure if he got hair or not or anything now, but he got hair. He had hair. So, and I will always do his hair. And at that time, it, it was, I was toxic, y'all. If, if I'm the only one that could do your hair, even that shit was dumb. Like, here's the fuck, we grown. You can go to shop and get your fucking hair done. Like, it is what it is. As long as you get your fucking hair done and you look nice, that's all that matters. That's where I'm at now. But then it was, you know, nobody can do your hair. So she wound up going over um, Tashima and doing clay hair. So at his sister's house, and then I found out that I think she stayed the night. And so at one point, I remember me vividly, vividly pulling him over while we was in the hallway waiting for the elevator. And I'm like, why would you have a girl come to your sister's house and even stay the night or, you know, do your hair? So we was going back and forth about that. Y'all, I don't even know. It just felt like, because we wanted to make a long story short, it just felt like at that time, during this engagement or whatever, even at that time, I remember even a fight broke out because right before the boiling point of the fucking fight, it, it was like, it got bad. Like, it got real nasty. Like, it, it, it went far. And I remember... People would say a little shit about me, and he would know. I found out later after the fact, but he would know. And I don't know, maybe because I was staying offish. Like, I don't know. I, I remember him always telling me, like, I had this persona, like, I'm better than everybody, you know, or something like that. But I come, I guess that's that's my aura, but that's not the case. When you know me, I'm down to earth. Like, but I shouldn't have to hate one part or one side of me because that's the energy that people pick up. That's a projection. Just because you think I carry myself like that, you must feel that way about yourself. So don't project that onto me. That's real shit. That's a projection. So that's something I've learned now. But I would I would used to feel bad about that because like damn, that's that's not how I would try to, you know, I want to come off. And sometimes 
my face expression do wear on my face, y'all. I'm not even gonna hold you, you know. So I don't know, but it it got bad. And I remember one time a fight broke out, um, because and it was with the girl, um, Tashina. And this was the same day I vividly remember him, me us going back and forth about the hair situation and everything like that. Um, I vividly remember we were in class and I was already head up the hair because at this point I felt like I was being bullied. Like it was like I felt like a whole class of people was against me, plus my nigga. Like <laughs> like I was one deep outside of my friend Nita. Like at the time, like that that was my hunger. Like it was and a couple other people, but you know how some people play both sides, so yeah, you never really know. But <laughs> I know her, we was cool. Mind you, y'all, we just meeting these people. We've been together for five years and some change. Look how much new people is interfering in the shit. Like <laughs> this shit got crazy. So at this point, um, that's sidebar. So at this point, um, I really was up to here. Like I, I felt like I was being bullied. Like it, it, it was a lot, and I already knew with anxiety, you know, and shit like that. So it was a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. I'm still trying to figure out and fix what the fuck going on with us because we supposed to be engaged at this time and shit like that. So you know, people, I'm. We done got hauls and looking at fucking people done put deposits down for dresses. Like the shit was, it, it was going down. So at this time, I'm like, um, I remember the girl Tashima was passing out papers and shit. She was passing out papers. And that's when um, I was sitting there and we was just getting done having Bible study. And we were literally at Bible study in the middle of class, like. Oh shit. And I remember we, we was reading Romans. Like, so we was having Bible study. And Tashima was passing out the papers. And it felt like every time she got to me, she was slamming the papers down. Like, she would not do that with nobody else. But every time she got to me, she was slamming the damn papers down. So I already told Anita, I'm like, yo. If she come back past me and she slam these papers down, it's going to be a problem. Anita like, no, no, don't do that. You know, we in school, you know, I got somebody else over here. Like, you know, don't worry about it. We in school, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, let that pass. But at this point, y'all already been letting a lot of shit pass. Like, I, it's, it's but so much that I can take before my stinger come out and I get this. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's. I can't, I can't help it. It's, that's not something that's, you know? So, <laughs> so she came back past and she slammed that last paper down. And all I remember, y'all, was me getting up out my chair and Nita was sitting right in front of me. So I'm like, yo, move. She like, no, I'm not going to move. So I try to go the other way. The other person like, no. So at this point, I, you know what I'm saying? I go around. And I walked up to her, and she got a stack of papers in her hand. And I straight said, walk her. The fuck? And snack them papers out of her hand and smooth walk the fuck off. That's it. That's all. So as I'm walking off, I done already exited the room. This bitch started screaming, I'm about to fuck her up or some shit like that. So this nigga, Clay, comes grab me. I'm calm as ever. I was just walking. You coming to grab me? Grab that bitch. What the fuck you grabbing me for? I'm calm. I'm not the one exploding. All I did was smack some fucking papers. Yes, I was petty. <laughs> I was petty. But I don't give a fuck. And I'm going to be calm about it. Like, what? Fuck. Stop slamming them fucking papers in front of me. That's it. That's all. That's that's it. That's all. <laughs> Just stop slamming the fucking papers in front of me. Like that's that's the only message I was trying to send across. I'm not I'm not trying to fight you. I'm not trying. You know what I'm saying? We in school, but you gonna stop sending them papers in front of me though. You know you don't got no papers because I smack them bitches out your hand. Like you know, fuck, they'll pick them up. Fuck. So I walked out. This nigga comes out. He comes grab 
me. So at this point, I'm like, you know, get the fuck off me. I'm calm. So I walk is this little bathroom with this little area. So I'm sitting there, you know, Anita come out. My dumb ass leave my fucking purse in the motherfucking classroom. Where I'm at? I'm 20 minutes in. Okay. I'm here we go. Try to be done by 30 minutes. I leave my motherfucking purse in the classroom. This bitch come out, walk past the bathroom area with my purse. Bitch, how about you come get your purse? I go get my purse. This bitch stuck in the fucking um hit me. So I go walk up to where I grab my purse. We face to face. This bitch ain't hit me yet. She ain't hit me yet. She did not hit me yet. So at the end of the day, we fight over purse. Eventually, I snatch my and pull my fucking purse away. All I know is, I'm not sure. I think she hit me first. I wound up swinging. Mind you, the fucking people are on the sheriff's office. Is on the fucking fifth floor. We on the tenth floor. I already done been through this shit already. So in my mind, I'm already, I'm instantly thinking about that. I done got locked up, fighting all this shit like that. So. And in the midst of that, y'all, I don't know what happened. It was like a outer body type experience. This bitch spit in my face. I remember she was standing in the chair. Again, honestly, this happened in 2018. So I don't really remember who hit, you know, 18, 19. I don't remember who hit who first. I don't even remember if I swung back. The only thing about the situation, I, did, I really, really remember this bitch spit in my face. She spit in my face, and it took everything in me not to hit this bitch back, and I didn't. Honest to God, I didn't hit this bitch back. And most people would have sat there and, and fucking fucked the bitch up and all this shit, but y'all, I felt like I was being tested. I done already been down the lockup situation at this time. I was older than everybody in that fucking class. My life is not about to be fucked up, or I'm not about to get assault and and no, 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 no. So, like I said, I felt like it was an outer body experience because I, it was this guy, and I'm mad I don't remember his name, but he was in our class. He jumped in front of me, and at this time, yo, I was getting ready to move. I just got my car. Like, I had a lot of good shit going on. I'm getting ready to graduate from this program. I'm actually working type shit, you know, working as I'm going to school. So shit was happening good. I just came back from Huntsville, Alabama. And at this time, it's not even about Clay. Granted, we going through this shit. We supposed to be engaged. But this shit at this moment is not about him. It was like a flash of everything that I worked for, everything that. So it was like I was being tested. Have you learned your lesson from the past into now? So. I don't know. He jumped at me, started naming all the shit that I've been working on and shit like that. And it was like, I started backing up. My fist was bald. And it was like, I started smiling. Like, it was it was some, something just took over me. Like, I was just backing up from the situation. Like, but somehow, when it was all said and done, I got in trouble for the shit. I'm the one that had to leave the program. I'm the one that had to, I couldn't graduate with my class. I had to graduate at another time. And attend an, another different class with another class. I didn't. I didn't finish my class with my class. So pretty much, it was like so many people was against me, and and, and the odds were stacked up at that time. But I didn't give up. I wanted to graduate. So as far as the engagement, y'all, we never after that situation. Shit was just fucked up. We never really recovered from that situation. Like, and not to mention, at that time, at that time, it was a dark secret that I had, and I learned a lesson in that. I don't give a damn who you lay with. If it's something that you know that you had to take to your grave, take that shit to your grave. Because it was something that, I, that was told to him out of confidence, and he wound up telling somebody else and he you know he claimed at the time that he has apologized for it um I'm I'm not gonna say that and there was a time where she uh she found out about it and the fact that it was even brought up to anybody that's like something that if if it's one of them things that I know I gotta take to my grave and I expect you to do the same like you, you, you shouldn't. That's something you shouldn't do. And and that 
that more goes into you should expect people to be like you. Because that's something that I will do. It's secrets and things that people have told me now to this day that I will never tell. That I will never tell. I don't give a fuck we're not talking to each other. I don't give a fuck. I, I will never tell. I will never tell because that's the kind of person I am. Real shit. So, and it was like after that, I couldn't. I remember I had to go to his sister's house. The, the girl wound up moving in with his sister and, and him. If I'm not mistaken, maybe he did, maybe she did. I don't know. I don't give a fuck. But I know she was always over there. And um, I remember me one day going, I wanted to drop off um, his mother's blanket um, to him. Um, and, you know, no, no, no beef, no, no none that. He had my social security card and my birth certificate. I, you know, I wanted to get my stuff and I had some stuff. So if it's done, it's done. You know what I'm saying? But even that turn left. And turn left. They tried to say that I kicked his sister door in. I remember vividly turning the knob and just walking in. Because there was already something wrong with the door. So all I had to do was turn the knob and open the door. That was it. I didn't kick the door. I didn't nothing. Maybe I tore the knob and opened it hard. I don't know. But I I didn't kick no door. Like, I wouldn't want nobody to come to my house and kick my door. So that's not something I would do. You know, I turned the knob. I shouldn't even do that. That's fucking ain't wrong. But I did. Like, if I'm going to admit to anything, I'm, you know, to be telling the truth over here is wrong. So... I did do that, but I remember going up the steps, and she was in, they was in the same room, and she was, ah, and I was, you know, and I don't even understand why it even, still to this day, I don't even understand what her beef was with me, like, because we was all, we was all cool at one point, so, but that is what it is, that's how it pretty much with the shits, and then from there, I'm not going to say after that, we ain't never talked, but like I said, he has apologized, I have apologized for some things, we, we had talked about, you know, some things. Um, you know, I'm at peace with the situation. It's not something that I'm harboring on or I will forever hate you. You know what I'm saying? Because I've learned a lot. Like, I've learned a lot within a relationship. I learned a lot within the engagement. I learned a lot even in that type of situation. Like, mainly important, I learned a lot about me. What I can accept, what I want to say. I've gained strength, especially in that situation, because the younger me, somebody spit on my face, I wouldn't give a fuck. I wouldn't give a fuck. I would not give a fuck. And I don't mean the younger me from the age I am now. I mean the younger me from that time. And I was probably like, what, 22, 23? No, hands of God, I wouldn't give a fuck. I would have fucked her up. But when God already put you or whoever you may believe, when they put you in a situation, he will test you again to see what you would do. And I felt like at that moment I was being tested. And I was also protected because my ass won. Like I said, it was like a like something was holding me, like some spooked out shit. Like I couldn't swing. I couldn't. It was like I just started walking backwards type of shit. Like, like once he said what he said. But after that, y'all, the engagement and everything was off. People had, I remember my cousin wound up, my grandma got one of the damn bridesmaid dresses. And she got the wedding dress because I already bought the wedding dress. I already bought the wedding dress. So. But that's in her storage or whatever. Or maybe she sold it, I don't know. But that's the story of how I... Almost got married and then it went to shit. <laughs> that's that's pretty much the gist of it. Like, like that was it. Like I said, everything happened for a reason. So I hope y'all like this story. Oh, and I finished at 29. Look, 29 11. Look that up. Hope y'all like this story. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell so you can be notified every time I post an amelia ass video. And welcome to all my new subs. Hi, guys. I hope y'all like my little story times, you know. Um, Again, there's always three sides to a story. There's my side. Hi. There's their side. And then there's the truth. Okay, but right now we're on my side, and that's my side of the story. 
Okay, so I love y'all. Thank y'all for listening. And be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell so you can be notified every time I post another lit ass video. I love y'all babies. Bye.